There's a lot less Invite in here than what I came up with. <laughs> Hey folks, uh, Nathan here. This is my YouTube channel. This, of course, is where you will find things like From the Star Wars Home Video Library, which just had a recent episode uh, about the Walmart reissues of Star Wars stuff that came out recently. Uh, you'll find stuff like the Fantasy Flight Games uh, reviews and product overviews, like what you saw recently, hopefully, on the channel of Waves 12 and 13 of X-Wing. Uh, I am the guy behind... Uh, the uh, A Saga on Home Video, A Fan's Guide to U.S. Star Wars Home Video Releases book, which is over on Amazon at this point. Uh, the guy behind the Star Wars Timeline Gold, the most comprehensive Star Wars chronology available anywhere, which you can find at StarWarsFanWorks.com slash Timeline. Uh, and I am one of the two hosts of both Cloud City Casino with Michael Morris and Star Wars Beyond the Films with Mark Hurlum and both of which are at StarWarsReport.com. This is the Battlefront Livestream Podcast, podcast not because it's an MP3 through a podcatcher, because it's, you know, not... Instead, more like a vodcast. It's uh, some gameplay, live streaming, but it is more along the lines of uh, being about the discussion than it is oftentimes about what we're seeing unless we happen to be playing the campaign at that point. Uh, that discussion can be with the chat. The discussion can be a commentary just when playing the game. Or uh, oftentimes I bring a guest with me to be able to uh, do some streaming and discussion together. Here for this second stream since... Uh, Putting on the spoiler warning and everything and making uh, The Last Jedi spoilers fair game, so fair warning. Look at the orange thing at the bottom. Look at the name of your stream. Spoilers are allowed. That's part of the point of this discussion. Um, I have with me this time, as a couple times before, Mr. Jim Perry, a.k.a. Indiana Jim, of the Star Wars Survival Guide podcast. Hey, Jim. Hello. <laughs> that, yep, yep, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. Um, we're still in the midst of the season of The Last Jedi. Of course, the movie just came out. We're going to be doing some multiplayer. Uh, if you want to see the campaign, I did that on a stream, the new campaign expansion, Resurrection. I did that a couple streams ago. You'll see it in the title on the stream if you look on the YouTube channel. Uh, but we're going to be jumping into, what do you think? Galactic Assault, Starfighter Assault, um, Rubber Band Assault. I mean, Heroes vs. Villains. Or, uh, <laughs> rubber Band Assault. Uh, I'm thinking maybe Galactic Assault. I mean... You said you were just doing some yeah. Starfighter, so I'll give you some change up of what you uh, what we're doing. Uh, I think that would work. Well, I had one round of Starfighter assault before you. Oh got, well, then, back on, then, so. then, then, then. Let's go which fly some planes. Prefer? Go fly some planes. Um, we're gonna have to change games here, folks, because um, these aren't planes. No, no, no. Just, <laughs> just, just giving him crap. All right, so. Jumping in here, uh, I had a pretty good one last time. I the last time I was streaming, um, decent attacking with the fighter because I finally got all those bomber kills, so I don't ever want to have to fly a bomber again. <laughs> and now that I've done that, um, I'm at the point where basically I'm just running around with fighters and interceptors, usually fighters, but managed to get Poe and just was tearing through um, on the last stream. Really? Still didn't wind up in the oh, top cool. five, which is mind-boggling to me, but okay, whatever. <clears throat> so we'll dive in here with Starfighter Assault. What? You've got uh, you have a uh, Galactic Assault, Starfighter Assault, and uh, um, I believe they're adding another assault mode soon called a uh, Matt Lauer. Am I understanding that correctly? Uh -huh. No. Mm. no. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, that's where that was going. Wah, wah. Come on and load. I have turned off the music. For those who are curious, um, the streams have started to be flagged like they used to be for the original Battlefront uh, for the music involved. And uh, usually what it does is it just says, you know, this music has this music means that this video has been monetized by the uh, copyright holder of the music, which is right. fine, <laughs> but not so much this time. What happened this time was it said that it will not be available in some regions. I'm like, oh. Well, or on some devices, excuse me, not even some regions this time. It will not be available on some devices. And I'm like, well, what the crap? And it won't tell you which devices. It just says, you know, some devices. You know, like if you're trying to watch it on an old flip phone, it probably won't work. That kind of thing. But because of that, I figured... Play the objective a little. Uh... I figured, yeah, I should probably turn the music off, even though that kind of stinks. Although I did notice a distinct lack of uh, Last Jedi music in any of the Last Jedi stuff. That kind of stinks. I was kind of hoping for some cool Last Jedi musical themes. Well, Not you so know, much. to that, on that note, you know, John Williams was using a lot of 
original trilogy stuff True. throughout the movie, so True. it's it's not really was that was that a dad a pun whole lot to go with <laughs> on that note when talking about music should have been but no on that half Sadly, note no, I'm on that, that quarter quite. note whoa how in the hell did I just spin that was interesting. So, uh, again, spoilers being fair game at this point, um, I gave sort of my general thoughts during the last stream, and I've actually edited but need to do a quick review uh, before uploading to make sure it's all good to go, um, but we'll be uploading my spoiler-filled thoughts tonight after, ad after uploading my spoiler-free thoughts last night, uh, but we haven't had a chance in the stream to get your thoughts on uh, Last Jedi yet, so are you in the... Uh, uh, team, it was good, or the team, oh my god, my childhood has been ruined again? Two minds remain. Well, I don't tend to uh, be on teams that way. Uh, but you I, tend to be a bit of a, a bit of a loner. I will say the first time was a lot to take in. Well, that's what you said. Sure what I saw. Sorry, you sorry, know? sorry. Uh, you're not sure what you saw the first time, okay? And. uh... So I knew, you know, I was watching it the next day with the kids, so I knew that I was going to get a second chance to look at it. And uh, with the second viewing, knowing how the story was going to unfold, seeing how it all was happening, I absolutely loved it the second time. Cool. Now, you Which took awesome, so. you took the youngins, so what ages are we talking about, and what did they think of the film? Uh, um, do you think that they, that they grasped the full measure of the film? Because that was something I was concerned about. Well, you know, full measure of the film, I, I don't know, that's hard, hard to define, I think. Um, you know, I, I was able to, I guess, discuss with them my thoughts on it and how I felt that, you know, ultimately how the themes were expressed throughout the film. So, for instance, nothing ever goes the way you think it's going to go, no matter how confident you are <clears throat> in the outcome. And so that goes both to the Jedi Order and how they did things in the prequels, how the Emperor thought things were going to go in the original trilogy, um, how Luke thought things were going to go on Bespin when he went to help his friends, you know, all of these things. It's a running theme throughout Star Wars is that nothing happens the way you think it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But, you know, how do you react to it when it goes, when it goes south? And so, you know, you've got and you've got misinterpretation throughout the whole film. I mean, both in, you know, Kylo and Luke's perspective, or Ben and Luke's perspective on whether Luke was attacking him or Luke was rethinking, you know, and, and <clears throat> this dichotomy between the two and, and how that sends in, <clears throat> excuse me, sends Ben over the edge um, over misinterpretation. Um, how Snoke sees how what his apprentice is going to do and doesn't realize that it's against him and not Rey. You know, right. um, they sense this renewed purpose, and that purpose is to kill Snoke and take over, not kill Snoke and go good. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, <clears throat> just quick welcomes here. Uh, welcome to JL, uh, Jack, and to uh, Storks fan, or Storks. Uh, we just started out, so you guys are just about right on time. It's not like you have any way of knowing exactly when it's going to start. It just kind of starts <laughs> whenever we're able. Um, so, there we go. Um... So, uh, what ages again? Uh, 13, 15, and 16. All right, so, and all together at the same show in there. Can't stay up much longer. Correct. Cool. 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 So, I, I, I'm curious to hear, I'm, when, I always do a discussion of any of the new films with Mark when we do uh, an episode of Beyond the Films, and it's one of those things where I was kind of sitting back thinking, you know, I think that a teenager would probably get all the themes. Um, I think mm -hmm. that an adult could get all the themes, although some of the adults were then gripe. Um, but then it, it kind of came back to the, but what about younger children? Because there are instances in which it seems like certain things are explained in ways that'll be easier for a kid to understand, and yet the themes are pretty heavy for something in some mm -hmm. cases for the, a kid to be able to necessarily get. Um, so I'm kind of wondering uh, his kids are kind of aged quite a bit apart how that's going to how that's going to play. Um, I know that my generation and my wife's generation, we were fine both watching it, although she kept telling me that Snoke was Ezra still. So, you know, <laughs> I think we yeah, were good. She's just, she's just trying to get you. Get even you with him dead, I think she's still going to keep saying that 
Like, like now it's going to be, I'm going to I'm gonna say, golly, I wonder how Rebels is going to end. they got to figure out what to do with Ezra so he's not around in the originals. Oh, don't worry, he becomes Snoke. She'll just keep doing it. Like, I wonder if Ezra's going to die. Oh, guess what? He already did because he was Snoke. Like, <laughs> well, and I want to make mention of, uh, at the outset of the, the Canto Bite sequence, too, because that's getting a lot of flack. flack. Uh, for being supposedly unnecessary and, and a you know, devoid I, of any... I've heard it referred to as, it's like a part of a Disney film dropped in the middle of a Star Wars movie. Really? Yes, that's that's the way that uh, uh, some viewer... I, I think it's mostly coming from the... Because it was phrased that way uh, on uh, the Angry Joe channel. Um, but I was think that's jail... been sort of run was, with... Was there a jailbreak in a casino scene in a Disney movie that I'm forgetting? I never say like, that the characters are all Disney-esque, and it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, it's the downtrodden, yeah. and it's all these animals and CG everywhere, and I'm like, I, okay. I mean, I, I guess I should be glad that forget. Rose and Finn didn't break into song, you know. Yeah, rem uh, do these people remember the cantina scene from Star Wars in 1977 with all the aliens and animals? I'm just I wondering. I, maybe they I, forgot. I don't know. I think they're just saying that. I think that they're thinking of it as a tonal shift. I didn't really feel as though that was much of a tonal shift of the film. It seemed like the tone of the film kind of depended on whose adventure we were following, but it all kind mm -hmm. of had that same. It's not really a dour note. There was, to some degree, kind of a downer kind of feel in some aspects, but there was enough levity mm -hmm. to keep it. Like, it was, it's kind of like The Empire Strikes Back, right? I mean, as bad as it gets, the humor is still there to have you kind of like, <laughs> oh, God, you know, as opposed to freaking out. Maybe, I guess. Perhaps. Yeah, no, uh, um, go ahead. I was going to say, we've got a, got a comment here from, uh, uh, let's see, Kenny, I believe. Uh, I feel conflicted with The Last Jedi. The side quest of the casino in Finn with, uh, with Rose and Finn was good. But it felt like it was different to everything. So, yeah, exactly what we were just talking about, the tonal difference and such. Well, sure, um, yeah. I mean, there was a tonal difference, but, you know, there's a... I don't know, there's a tonal difference in a lot of different scenes. I mean, take the Anakin Padme stuff in the picnic. I mean, that gets a lot of grief, and <laughs> that's a total tonal shift. I mean, between... I guess uh, I'm trying to... Maybe not. That's, go a, to that's the a total tonal shift in Padme's enough. attitude towards whether or not she wants them to get. Oh, you mean like in the film? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the GR75 in here. The GR75 is the transport, right? Um, the question that's being asked by Sunfisher was whether it's still possible to die from the GR75, which I'm assuming is just a question of whether you can crash into it and die. Um, I'm honestly not sure. I haven't. Right, it, and I'm not What's sure that there's a first order transports or uh, no, like the Empire Strikes Back type transports. And I don't see them on this. I miss you got the blockade runners. Let's see if I can run into a blockade runner and survive as a rebel. Yeah, no, you will die. You sure? You I sure? Ah! Yeah. Yep, I died. <laughs> it's very much a don't put your hand on that in that fire. It's gonna be hot. Don't you touch that hot pan, it's gonna be hot. Oh, you got burned, didn't you, dumbass? All right, all right, learning, learning experience. All right, uh, JL is asking um, who would win in a fight between the Power Rangers and Snoke. My answer would be Snoke because he would just slap them around without ever having to come near them. All he would have to do is like call them on a hologram communications array and beat the hell out of them with the force and they'd be like, but we can't even even hit you. He's like, reach out and touch someone, bitch. Right. Well, right. okay. I'll, Sir. Oh, well, ah. unless you're done with your bad jokes. Um, so. Yeah, go ahead with Canto <laughs> Bite. Come on. <laughs> he knows me too well. well. He just, knows I'm just going to get sidetracked with random crap oh, and then he's like, go. yeah, but as I was saying 10 minutes ago. Right, yeah. I never got to my point. Organized. Um, you know, it's, Force Awakens was criticized for, you know, uh, gosh, I don't know, it, not going enough new places, maybe? Was that a thing that people didn't like? Uh, I think they, the, I you're talking remember. about physical locations, right? Yeah. I think they'd, they saw well, the similarity between, like, Jakku and Tatooine, and it was sort of a, 
uh, oh, yeah. not so much that it didn't like go into really places that it didn't have a change okay. of scenery kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Like, like oh well, you know, Star Killer Base. It's snow. It's very much like Hoth right. kind of. Yes. So. Yeah. So here's a movie with a completely new location, a completely new feel. You've got, you know, they're looking for the master code breaker, and sure, it's it's kind of a the mission's sort of a waste because of all the things that result from it. So they don't get the right guy. They end up, you know, the guy ends up double crossing them. Um, they don't accomplish the mission that they set out to accomplish. But the showing the dichotomy, and I don't want to talk about like you know income gaps and all that stuff because. It makes me sound like a Democrat, Get but ready, um, <laughs> and nobody wants that. Um, we are the space 99%. The is, right. So these are yeah, <laughs> the space 99%. It's funny. Um, you know, these are the people financing the the war, you know, and, and, and the war is what's compounding the suffering in the galaxy. The profiteers, kids, in essence. Yeah. Yeah. And these kids are the, are the stand-ins for the... For, yes, the oppressed of the galaxy, because it's about the resistance and the rebellion, you know, against the First Order and against tyranny. So, you have an illustration of it, and, you know, somebody on Twitter said, well, we could just mention it and talk about it. Well, no, you, you show, don't tell. Yeah, show, don't tell. <laughs> exactly. Um, you have the, 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 re the relationship building between Finn and Rose, which someone else said that, uh, well, that's just Disney trying to get that Asian Chinese money. I'm like, really, dude? <laughs> really? Really? You're, wow. you're going with the diversity angle now? Like, oh, I like this diversity. There's not enough white people. So, so does that mean that they wouldn't no. have been, they would not have had a criticism black, about so. Rose if she was a white character? <laughs> Basically? No, I'm sure they would have. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm sure they would have. Um, but you know, and it, and it and it builds a relationship between the two of them. So at the end, you you know, you have the scene where she says, "It's not, you know, fight against what you hate, but save what you love." You know, right. and that's that's another theme. That's what Luke did. You know, he didn't chose not to go. You know, confront Kylo physically. Right. He saved. You know, the people that he loved right. and the Although, movement that he cared about. I would say that that might now to that same criticism. Do you? Uh, for me, I'm able to buy the to some degree able to buy the Rose being like. Oh, I love Finn now thing because of the hero worship angle, but also the fact that they've just been through a lot of crap together. The adrenaline's pumping, and in a movie like this, you don't want it to be that they sure just are like, Oh, the adrenaline, let's go do it. That instead it would need to be you something to a little more emotional exactly. because there's, it's Disney. There's something, yes. But, but that's what there's you're seeing. There's a relationship. That, that's what you're art. So would, would you agree that that is a... There's some question as to whether or not that was... A, a circumstance adrenaline based thing versus something that is genuine do you do we expect that to play out as something that is uh, reciprocated in the next film and and just for those who in the chat uh, uh, yes it says spoiler warning at the bottom we're talking about the film it says spoiler warning in the name we're talking about the film jumping into the chat and trying to throw out spoilers for shock value doesn't actually work when it's a spoiler based stream I'm just I'm just of the thought hey, process that that may be spoilers. a little bit of a Wasted effort. That's um, funny. Unless that was just, you know, kind of a way of saying hello, in which case, hello. But yeah, I, I found that odd. Somebody did that like. in the first stream I did today, too. They're like, like yeah, here's some spoilers. I'm like, yeah, and I've been talking spoilers for like the last 20 minutes. Awesome. Well, um, so what do you think? I mean, is that going to be something that's probably going to continue? Do you expect Finn to reciprocate? Or is this, like, are they setting up a love triangle, Finn, Ray, Rose, given the way that he was talking to her last time? Or are you writing that off as totally platonic? Potentially Poe. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, and that's the interesting, that that was a, that was one of those things where it was kind of, and there's no hint of that in this one. Um, right. And then people are like, oh my god, the Finn Poe relationship is dead. And it's kind of like, well, they didn't really ever have one. That was speculation and hopes for some. So, not really sure that counts as the relationship is dead because it never existed. You know what I mean? Oh, I just. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I just crashed his podium in that stone. <laughs> you just got snoked. I mean, smoked. Ah. Wah, this is interesting. They've, they've added that uh, that speed boost thing. That uh, 
booster jet deal to his fighter. Yeah, I saw that. You got now. the fourth ability, the triangle button ability now. I was doing that last time. I was trying to... So, because, you know, obviously, if you do look at the milestones for all the different hero ships, it's all mm -hmm. basically... There's one that actually involves killing, usually, and the rest of them are just, use this ability X number of times. So I was Poe, and I was just like, BB-8, fix me, even though I don't need fixed. And rocket pack, zoom, zoom. And I was just hitting the buttons constantly to get as much toward the milestones right. as I yep. could. And I almost yep. got to the yep. end of it. That's Okay, good. At least I'm not the only one who's just like, I don't care about the objective. I want them milestones. So okay, I can get so some credits and get me some crates that aren't going to give me any blues or purples. I just shot down a guy whose name is Brosiopath. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I fought a guy. I killed a guy earlier whose name, or either killed or was killed by someone whose name was a Frodo. Now I, I, or I like I am Frodo or something. That I was thinking, you know, somebody needs to stop that guy because he's got the ring and you don't want Snoke to get it. <laughs> Right, One does not simply walk onto crate. <laughs> oh shit! Missile lock. Yeah, so this is this is the funny thing about it is that on the one hand the critics are complaining that all oh, the stupid being you know chased through space and they're all going slow and there's nothing happening and I mean yet they complain that. Canto Bites just an action scene that nobody needed. You know? Right. It's like, right. How dare well, you not you have want? more action scenes amidst the action yeah, scenes? Except we that one. That action scene was worthless. <laughs> uh, I do find it interesting that there is the, um, and I didn't even see it really thinking about it at the time. Um, there are, well, this is just a remake to an extent of the Empire Strikes Back argument already. Um, my how in my what way? and I'll, t I'll tell you my thought is that it uh, it's more of the rhyming thing as kathleen kennedy put it um absolutely uh, because it's you have the characters in in, in two different main locations throughout basically where they wind up there on two separate paths almost like it's two separate stories like mm -hmm. uh like in empire you have a battle on a uh white landscape with walkers you have mm -hmm. a uh, a casino kind of of upper class location involved, like a Cloud City, although we don't really see that side of Cloud City. Um, mm -hmm. You have uh, the Gunners one character has to go off and find an old Jedi Master who was initially reluctant to train them, while the mm -hmm. others are involved in an ongoing chase um, with uh, superior forces uh, bent on evil, etc., etc. Good lord. So I'm like, like after the movie, I was like, okay. nobody's gonna complain about this being a remake of anything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they yes, will. Yes, yes, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will. Woo! Good grief. Well, of course there's rhyming, and what does that show except an appreciation and a valuing of what George Lucas did to begin with? It's not a value, well, man. It's just a ripoff, man. It's just a ripoff, man. I mean, the people either either Disney's turning their back on George Lucas because they didn't like what he did with the prequels, or they're too close to what George Lucas was saying. It's like, or doing. Which is it? You yeah, can't have it both ways. Pick yourself. Well, I mean, I think that 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 we're being trained by politics now, right? You know, like, yes. like I take full I I take full responsibility for what I said. I promise I never actually will treat anyone like that. Um, but three months later, four months later, it's that actually fake. wasn't me. I think it was fake and it was dumb. It was just fake news. Sad. Um, all right. And hey to Bobby, uh, who's popped up in the chat here. Um, and uh, I got to say that I found the um, – uh, just based on something that Kenny's commenting in the chat, he says, it's funny to me how Ray kept trying to convince Luke to return and how long it took her to do that. And I find it, it reminded me a lot of the way that, you know, you'd have this, like the typical old samurai type story uh, where mm -hmm. you've got the person who wants to go train and the reluctant knight or the reluctant samurai who doesn't want to train or doesn't want to go back to war. And it takes yep. a measure of convincing or showing your fortitude and your perseverance by not walking away every time you're told no that convinces them to finally do it. I felt like that was mm -hmm. very um, archetypical. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it gives an opportunity to build the lore, which is kind of what Luke is sort of doing kind of <laughs> kind of sort of i don't, I don't think they were building lore, more lore so much i mean i mean i don't think brent spiner was in it so they weren't building lore or data for that matter but but oh, i get what you're saying i get i get your, your point. 
Uh, Flash ver- mm-hmm. I, I think I've already answered that, J.O., before, <laughs> asking Flash versus Snoke. My answer is if Snoke can... F- uh, well, no, no, he, I guess that was Kylo Ren was asked. Um, I don't know. It depends on if Snoke can move fast enough to throw him around. Snoke basically was sort of godly until he, you know, wasn't. <laughs> you know well, that's, I mean? a, that's, a, that's another thing that gets a lot of grief from, from fans. And it's like, you know, on the one hand, you can build Snoke up and keep him around till episode 9 yeah. and let him be the big bad and all that. Right. But by the simple fact that it was so surprising. Yeah. You know, going in, you're you're not expecting him to die from a story right. angle. You're not expecting them to right. kill him off so quickly. Right. And so that when they do, that has even more shock value. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And besides the shock you know, value, that, I mean, it, it redefines the character, I would say, because we, at first, I mean, he was basically there as sort of the, ooh, who is this guy? How, you know, how powerful is he? And all that kind of stuff. As, oh, well, he's just the guy that has just been out there training Kylo, whatever. We don't really know anything about him. Right. And while the mystery did build up over time, you look back at it. I mean, it's basically um, we got we to gotta unthink, the, or unthink or rethink the fact that we thought he was going to be the big bad. But he was never meant to be the big bad, presumably. Instead, he is the, an important stepping stone in making Kylo the big bad. Kylo has to surpass the master, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought well, that was a kind of a shocking choice, but I can understand it in, in the um, the long run. That's the twist on Return of the Jedi, isn't it? I mean, we didn't know anything about the Emperor. All we knew was yep. he was the Emperor. We didn't know he was a senator from Naboo. We didn't know he had this big scheme that resulted in the dissolution of the Republic. You know, all we know is the Emperor dissolved the Senate and is really creepy and strong in the forest. You know, and and at one point looked know. like a monkey with lady eyes or lady with monkey eyes or something. Sure. But it's okay because so, he got a, a special edition makeover. And and the twist is, you know, you've got the elevator scene with Ray and Kylo, I almost said Luke and Vader, which mirrors the scene with Luke and Vader. You know, Luke saying, I know you're not going to turn me over to your Emperor. I know you're, you know, there's still good in you and all of this. And it's like, end, nah, bro, you're going to join redeemed. me. Right. And so with Ray, it's like the same thing. I know you're going to make the right choice. I know you're going to turn good. And in the end, he doesn't. He actually goes the opposite. And yet, I would say that the, that in essence, they were, bo- both of their visions were still technically true, but their interpretation, like you were saying, it's that... point of view. Right, and it's the whole, you know, it's not going to go the way you think. The, the That theme you were talking about earlier, that it's basically, you know, um, you know, he joins... And I... There were enough surprises to the film, and they handled the emotional aspect of Kylo Ren well enough that I actually thought that he could be turning um and that to an extent that's the idea that he would turn away from his master but still hold the same ideology and still think that it'd be the right thing to do that to me screams vader also because you think back to you know vader right at the end of revenge of the sith you know uh, uh, i'm more powerful i can overthrow him we can rule the galaxy and make it the way we want it to be i mean isn't that basically right. what kylo just pulled um, with Ray, and I, that, to me, that is perfectly in keeping. I mean, just because you hate Hitler doesn't mean, uh, if you're a Nazi, just because you hate Hitler doesn't mean you love Jews and you don't want to bring the world under Nazi rule. It just means you don't like the oppression of that specific person who may have been holding you back or something, you know? Right. Yeah, and it's, uh, Anakin did it because... Because of love, you know, he was so attached to Padme and, and and loved her so much that he just wanted to do anything he could to keep her alive. And so that in the end, when he thinks he's responsible for her death, you know, he's absorbed with self-loathing and you know all that hatred and, and you know is he plotting against the Emperor the whole time? You know, who knows? But. In the end, it, it comes down to love again. With Kylo, it's simply about hate. He's killing all the people who yeah. were his loved ones at one time, who he feels yeah. betrayed him. Although I was very impressed by the fact that they didn't have him fire the kill shot on Leia. That he was actually, after the emotional abuse he just took from Snoke, and after mm-hmm. the hesitation and difficulty he had in, in killing Han in the first place, um, that he wasn't willing to go through with it, but then one of his wingmen are like, yeah, I'm not emotionally conflicted. I'm going to blow her up. All right, all right, cool. You know, that there was that uh, 
you know, the fact that, I mean, and of course that was where our big expectation was, oh, she might not die, but surely he's going to be the one firing the shot because we see that in the trailer, and then even the trailer expectation gets turned on its head. Mm -hmm. What did you think yeah, about... Oh, so gonna... I'm uh, no. <laughs> no. I was wondering what you thought about, and this is something that uh, Michael mentioned when we were uh, talking a little bit by text, and I'm sure it'll come up when we talk on a Cloud City Casino. And that is, mm -hmm. um, he felt as though, and I think other people as well, feel as though um, Luke at all being willing in that moment to, um, to kill Ben on the prospect mm -hmm. of what he would likely do in the future, that that was not Luke, that that was too out of character for Luke to the point where it breaks the character or the film. I don't particularly see it that way. I'm curious, though, how you see it. Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I don't see it that way at all. You know, it's Luke is in a completely different place than we saw him in Return of the Jedi. You know, he is, he is now responsible for teaching this new generation of Jedi. He is responsible for protecting the galaxy against another Darth Vader or another Palpatine. And so his initial instinct is, oh my gosh, I got to stop this. You know, the Jedi Council, last, they wouldn't have hesitated. You know, that person would have been, you know, done with because of the darkness they saw right. in him. But right. after that, you know, he, like he says, it passes, you know, it passed in a moment. And because Luke is better than that. And right. so it's a reinforcement of Luke's character, not a, it doesn't go see, yeah, against see, that, his character. That was what, that's it's the way the I argued it. That, you know, it's, that it everyone shows is great tempted to the dark side. Yeah. yeah. Everyone is tempted to the dark side. But Luke and also Ray, who I was really happy with, Resisted the temptation. They see? kept their we, we, purity we, and nobility. Gotta have you on there sometime and be like, see, see, Jim agrees, so I'm right. And son of a bitch, I was inside one of those uh, cylinders as the scimitar and got slammed into the wall. Oh no. Damn it. That was you? That was me that got that was slammed you. You into were the green. wall. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's all right. I had enough points still to jump back as Vader, so that's fine. I'm just gonna, I'm doing the whole, I'm just gonna keep using the abilities as often as I can because I need to for the thing. I'm kind of afraid of going back inside any of these now as a hero ship. Right. Oh, we got some serious lag here, people. <laughs> uh... People? Did I say people? People. Lag oh! here, people. Yep, dead again inside a, inside a cylinder. Dead again. Um... So, uh, that's Ooh, interesting. So, one. uh, oh, sweet. Um, so Senator Confer, uh, says that he spoke with Leland, Leland Chi, on Twitter, uh, mm -hmm. who said that the story group hasn't had a need to make a day by day timeline of The Force Awakens. Cool. I mean, cool, but not cool at the same time. Like, it'd be nice for them to know, but why would they need to know it yet? Um, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, remember that there, there was an, we knew that Return of the Jedi was four years after A New Hope. But we never really got a specific in-universe digital calendar date on the old GRS system, Great Resynchronization System, um, until I had to basically create one for um, the Essential Atlas when we were working on it, because there just never was a need. Their thing is they don't seem like they want to create things that lock things down unless they actually have to, unless it shows up in a story or is needed for something like the Atlas. So I'm not at all surprised that they didn't come up with a exact day-to-day -day timeline for uh, The Force Awakens yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'd be that difficult to figure out, but I'm not surprised that they didn't. A few more hits in this battle is done! Nice. Really? It, they're at 94%. How is that a few more hits? <laughs> yeah, a few more minutes that. worth of hits, maybe. Speaking of hits, um... Uh, so Kenny, uh, Kenny says, uh, Leia being blasted into space was very shocking, and then her going back into the ship was very strange, being like Mary Poppins. I will give you an explanation of why that's not Mary Poppins esque, and it will, hey Brian, it will help your, uh, it, it might help your looking at it. It's the force and physics. She uses the force. What is she doing? She's not flying. She's not Supergirl. She's not Kara Zor-El. She is she's force grabbing, grabbing and pulling on the ship. But it's zero-G, right. it has much more mass and inertia than she would, 
equal and opposite reaction by pulling on the ship. It doesn't pull it towards her, it pulls her towards it. It's just physics, that's all it was. Though granted, I, I, I would have expected if this was in the prequels, maybe she would have farted and that would have flown her <laughs> back to the ship. But they, they the Ryan Johnson power. decided to use, uh, you know, actual physics. But that, I really, I, I, the fact that people were criticizing that initially for the fact that it looks like she's flying more so than the fact that she's using the force at all kind of surprised me. Though yeah, they've I mean, got references to her being trained. Yeah, I was like, that is so cool! And those are like, yeah, that's, that's so stupid, man. I don't, that's stupid. Like, is stupid? It Why awesome. is it stupid? Um, I gotta answer these real quick, or say these real quick, they're gonna miss them. Uh, do you personally see yeah. The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi happening close together uh, to the beginning of 34 ABY or the beginning of 35 ABY? Uh, I'm of the latter, he says. Then Indy says, Anakin jumps on a speeder on Coruscant, no one bats an eye. Leia Force pulls herself back onto a ship, people lose their mind. Well yeah. done, Indy. Um, I would say that, I mean, it's the more we see from a timeline perspective, the more that we see of what appears to be 34 ABY uh, with The Last Jedi in it, the more it makes me think that it must be later in the year or at least a few, a couple months or something into the year because we have a crap ton of stories now that take place before it that are somehow still in that year according to the way they're labeled. And the, yeah. the friggin' amount of time in the Poe Dameron series versus the amount of time that elapsed during a... Before the Awakening still frustrates the crap out of me, but not nearly as bad as the uh, Escape from Vaudrin book, the second book in Join the Resistance, which has the Incredible Farting Wedding in it. So, you know, thank goodness for Incredible right. Farting Weddings. Ah! My ear was itchy for a second. I don't know what it is about being on the stream that makes my ear itch. Maybe it's just the headset or something. Uh, let's see, I could be... Kylo, who I need to be, except the max number's already in play. Do I just sit here for a second, pounding on the, ch the selection button, hoping that I get to play as Kylo, or do I actually jump in? I'll give it about 30 seconds, maybe. Uh, let's see, loved how much Poe tried to go against Laura Dern's character, Amelyn Holdo, uh, because he believed he was, uh, she was putting them in danger and tried to take leadership and save them. Um, I don't know, I think that Poe... Poe may have had the right intentions, but I feel like he did it the wrong way. Like, Leia's been trying to get him to be a leader. And in being a leader, he did that by not trusting in the chain of command, by not trusting in orders. So there's a part of me that says, oh, yeah, you know, he was taking the lead to try to save the day. But at the same time, he basically was being a bad soldier, a bad part of mm -hmm. the chain of command, you know. Um, it was yeah. actual mutiny. I don't. I don't know. And the fact that it didn't really work out the way he intended, me, eh, you know, it's. That's the theme of the film. It's not going to go the way you think. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to jump in as a fighter because I'm not getting any hero characters here. Uh, Brian says, "I remember you speaking to, about me. I suppose uh, saying Kate Skywalker is your favorite EU character. Damn right. Who is your favorite canon character? For me, it's Kylo Ren, and this movie just reinforced it." You, Jim? Wow. Uh, and, and Dr. Aphra. If, it's, if we're talking movies, it's Kylo Ren, but if we're talking just, uh, like, talking about non-movies, Aphra is awesome because Aphra is bat guano insane. And yeah. funny. And did I mention insane? Yeah. Um, okay. It's hard to say. You know, I, obviously Ray was my favorite of the new characters. And still is, and Luke was my favorite of the original characters, and still is. You're very, uh, I like the hero. That's good. I well, yeah. Well hero Shmiro! Which I, I'm told is what was I said did. at the end of some sandwich shops, too. I do like the, emer the kind of the emergence of Finn's character, too, because even Finn is turning into kind of a leader in the Resistance, too. He yep. Just Poe. Let's see, uh, uh, I wonder how much pre uh, JLS says, I wonder how much pressure was put on Adam Driver for killing Han. Hopefully not much, hopefully it wasn't, ooh, I'm in second. Hopefully it wasn't like the douchebags who, uh, <laughs> gave death threats to R.A. Salvatore for trying to, uh, for quote-unquote killing Chewbacca, uh, or hell, mm -hmm. the death threats that I got for daring to say I could like Legends and Canon both. 
friggin' <laughs> alt legends. Um, and then let's see. If I had to pick between Kylo Ren and Afra, I'm thinking now I'd pick mm. Kylo Ren. I actually would pick Kylo now. I think that if you had asked me a week ago, I would have said Afra. But this film did a really good job with Kylo. Um, yeah, it did. Let's see. Benicio del Toro was good. His char- his stutter was funny. I found his he was just an odd character. The fact again, defying expectations. I expected him to be the one when the ATST, which is still called that apparently, by the way, uh, started blasting away at the first order to save Finn and Rose. I figured that was DJ, uh, which by the way mm-hmm. stands for don't join because he doesn't want to be part of any factions right. uh i right. said in the stream that i thought it stood for douchebag jackass but that's okay apparently that's not right um <laughs> but yeah i think i he was a good addition but i expected him to turn i expected it to be a triple cross kind of thing and not so much am yeah, i in a t70 yes I, that too. I kind of forgot about bb8 altogether yeah <laughs> What did you think of the fact that uh, it's when, when Poe is reunited with BB-8 that it really is kind of like it's almost like he's talking to his dog. You didn't really get a sense of exactly how that relationship worked uh, in The Force Awakens except that he cared. But it's interesting that it really does feel like a pet kind of scenario now. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, he rubs his belly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, can crap. a droid feel your droid running in the belly? <laughs> Does a droid know at, it's being pet? At, le- at least you said belly instead of rubbing his ball, because that would have just, there would have just been, there's there's a, there's a problem in <laughs> there. Rubbing his ball. Uh, he's only got one. He's only got one. Um, he must have gotten uh, hurt like the, the guy in the movie Hope Floats. That's the only thing, by the way, I remember about that movie. We saw it at a drive-in, and I hated it, except I remember the line, One Ball Bastard, and the fact that somehow this guy lost a testimony. Like, okay, well, I know all I need to know about the movie Hope Floats now. Dude, Hope Floats is one of the best movies ever made. I think that's the movie. I see. I see. Well, well yeah, well, you know what? I think The Last Jedi is just a copy of Hope Floats. <laughs> Because they talk about hope and they're in space and stuff like floats in space. (laughs) So I think that you're wrong and Disney sucks and uh, yeah. There you go. Now I've I've had my internet quota of douchebaggery for the day. Yeah, saying that oh this was too much of a Disney movie, you know. this is like too much Star of a Wars Disney out, movie. When Star Wars came out, they said, this looks like a movie Walt Disney could have made. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Which was a compliment. It's for kids? What? Well, I'm very curious to children? hear what huh? young people thought, like really young people thought of this. Um, come on. There we go. Die! I said well, die, younger, and then I died. I think people, that worked the wrong way. Right. Younger people aren't overanalyzing the thing. Like with you know, the prequels, same thing. That's yes, exactly. Anything that came after the original trilogy, because by the time the prequels were coming out, we had spent so many years with the original movies that they'd been analyzed and you know internalized and valued as these cinematic masterpieces and memorized and everything else that nothing could possibly live up to any expectations. Yeah. Yes, this is true. Oh crap! Or, or or be accepted on the merits without again we have to overanalyze it and overthink it. Right. And kids are just like, yeah, that was a fun movie. That was really cool. What Luke Skywalker did. Wow. So uh, I follow, uh, or I'm friends with Chris uh, Travas, the art Star Wars artist on uh, Facebook. Um, yeah. From back in the essential Atlas days, I guess. And uh, I noticed that he mentioned. I think it was uh, this is one of his kids. I think. That uh, said, uh, wow, if they ever made a Star Wars Christmas special, that'd be stupid. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's time did, to share. Time to share that one. Um, that's funny. You know, I thought, it's like, yes, that's exactly right. No, no, now, see, see, it's not discs, right? It's just, uh, so BB-8 had more to do, and some of it worked. Uh, some was weird, like when BB-8 shot those discs at the security guards. They're not discs he was shooting at the security guards. It was coins. Because right. the dude kept using him as a slot machine. 
thinking he was a game, and then BB-8 was like, okay, I'm gonna take these and just fire him back. Ah, shit! Whoa! Fire him back at us as projectiles. Mm-hmm. So, that works for me. That works. Um, speaking of which, get your scent, your feeling on this. Um, so, um, John Jackson Miller, um, also on Facebook of all places, but John Jackson Miller, um, who I've had the pleasure of working on an X-Wing scenario with ages ago, um, came up with an interesting new way of watching the films. What you do is you watch uh, The Last Jedi, then you watch Return of the Jedi, uh, then you watch The Force Awakens, then you watch The Empire Strikes Back, then Revenge of the Sith, then Rogue One, and then eventually you watch Episode Nine, And you run those together. And uh, granted, it leaves out Episodes 1 and 2, which are my bottom two anyway. Um, but it was interesting because he called that the, uh, uh, the Jenny Order. The what? Watching the Jenny order, as in eight, Jenny? six, seven, five, three, row nine, with the row being oh, row no. one. <laughs> I was That's like, "That funny. is freaking brilliant! That is brilliant!" <laughs> Knew I had it. So you have the Jenny order of watching the films now. Again, all Man. credit to John Jackson Miller who came up with that. I'm not that creative. <laughs> but I was like, Chill "That me. is perfect! That is amazing!" What? That would be very confusing, but it was amazing. No, not not what to you. Not what to you. What what to somebody else? Uh. <laughs> gonna die. Gonna die. Gonna die. Gonna. Nope. Oh, got him. They should have known better. And again, yeah. let's 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 rewind for the chat. Yes, it says spoilers allowed in the title. It says warning spoilers down here. We've been talking spoilers for basically 45 minutes, so popping in and tossing in a spoiler as if it's for shock value, at least I'm assuming for shock value, since there wasn't a chance to even say hello first, kind of right. isn't grasping the point of the You're street. Doing it wrong. But if it's being done just for a, hey, let's toss out a spoiler so we can begin joining in the conversation, then absolutely, welcome to the conversation. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe they see that, oh, I'm supposed to introduce myself with a spoiler. Which would be a cool <laughs> game, wouldn't it? Like, introduce it with, or have one that's like, introduce it with a fake spoiler. So come in and be, be like, yeah, man, it turns out that, uh, Keep your eyes open. that, uh, you know, Finn is really the love child of, uh, Amelyn Holdo and, and Lando. Like, whoa! Yeah. And Amelyn Holdo once stuck her hand in a big old pile of dinosaur poop. Yeah, didn't say. Not fake. I'm not saying that you could make, you could do fake spoilers as like a, as a gag to get people interested, kind of like an icebreaker type thing, like a, mm -hmm. like you do it, like if you have an office meeting or something like that, you might have an icebreaker type thing. Uh, let's see. So, uh, what did you think? Uh, that Ray apparently is an everyday girl, not special as Kylo told her. If that's true, I actually think that's kind of cool, having it be sort of an everyday hero thing. Sort of gets away from the mm -hmm. idea that it must all be about your bloodline and your midichlorian count, perhaps, if that's assumed to be a bloodline thing. Um, I thought it was... Well, I thought it worked, and it, it makes sense that if it's gonna be something... The Force kind of giving someone a lot of light side power to try to balance out Kylo, that the Force could choose anyone, you know? It wouldn't have to be someone that we knew, and Absolutely. A, lot of, yeah, a lot of people saying that they think that it's a fake story, that she actually is related to someone we know. Um, but I don't know, because if the story is, you know, she was sold off for water or for whatever um, by the parents, mm -hmm. I mean, who is holding her in her vision and her memories? Uncar Plutt when she's left behind, and that's just the kind of douche who would say, yeah, you want some water? All right, but give me the kid. <laughs> you know, that's exactly the kind of guy that would do that. Right, I need slave labor. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's Not slave Leia, slave labor, labor, which is a different thing. It. Right. Which brings up an interesting proposition. Um, but, what? Um, so, um, slave Leia. <laughs> Sla slave Leia? You just added a syllable. That's some crap. That's That's cheating. Um, yes, it was cheating. That was so cheating. cheating. Um, Brian asks us, or says, I'd love to hear you guys discuss whether, whoa, if uh, Ray can and will be back the Jedi, if she can, what do you think the order will be like? Um, Probably eight, six, seven, five, three, and row one, nine. 
What? No, not that order. What's the order. <laughs> not that order. Not the Jenny oh, okay. order. Okay. If Ray would could be about the Jedi order. Although she doesn't really have. Well, I guess. There. Okay. So you. Tell me if you noticed this. So, I couldn't tell what happened to the books. I thought the books got destroyed with the tree, but it sounds like some people have said that they noticed, I think I was in the restroom at the time, that uh, yes. once on the Millennium Falcon, it's actually, um, you actually yeah. see that they're on the ship, right? Yes, it is clear okay. when she opens. Okay, so the books when, are when safe. Ray opens the drawer, Ray opens the drawer to put something in the drawer, and the and, and the books are right there, and then Finn later gets into the drawer and puts his hands on the books, and it's ah. actually touching them. Okay, that's what I missed. Okay, cool. So, Because I didn't see her actually get back on the Falcon and leave, because uh, I had to take a leak, dang it! Although, for someone with IBS, I was very impressed with the fact that I actually got through the movie with only one restroom break, because usually I can't pull that off at a movie theater. That's why we sat on the end of a row, so that I wouldn't disturb other people. Um, right. But, okay. That's that that's good. That's good. Um, let's see. And, well, and uh, some uh, Jason Ward of making Star Wars thing uh, said he noticed. You know, Yoda says there's nothing in those books which the girl Ray does not already possess. Right. So she's got that inherent Meaning ability. She you know. no no no. She possesses the books. Now. Oh, she possesses the books themselves. There's nothing in the books that she. So doesn't that was possess. so that was Yoda being like being like she stole from you, but you do not know yet. <laughs> right. Gotcha. You know, what about the sacred text, young Skywalker? Because it's need to know. And Luke doesn't now, need did to you know. find? To, okay, so speak, speaking lesson. of his mocking of the books and what's in them, and how you, you know, uh, I think Luke said, you know, you shouldn't read them, you shouldn't put too much stock in text or whatever. Do you think that was a backhanded jab at Legends fans who can't get over the change to the new canon? No, it's so stupid. People that are jaded. I thought that for a second. Gonna... Are you calling me stupid? Okay, no, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> okay. No, um, That's good. Well, I did call you an idiot yesterday, so. <laughs> that is true. So, we're 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 on even ground here now. We're two for That's two. That's because you were delirious. So, no. That was just I mean, because I was so tired. Again, That's okay. people people who really feel bad about that are going to look for anything from them, anything that mentions a book at all, and say, "Ooh, what are they saying about legends? What are they saying about legends?" Yeah. But like, get over yourself. They're not saying anything about it. Luke is a legend. They're not thinking about it. Luke you became are. a book. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, well, the galaxy may need legends. <laughs> got a question from uh, R. Garner, who asks, uh, did you tear up at any moments or come close? I would say, I think I had some moments of like, Whoo! but I'm not sure that I got to a tear up kind of, kind of moment with this one. Um, let's say we go to some land maps. Let's say we go to some, yeah, let's do some land maps, sure. Come on! Oh yeah, it said, it said quitting, so it finally was. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I did. I just, I mean, there were a lot of emotional moments, but I don't know that I was kind of like getting teary-eyed. Um, I uh, like, I would have expected it when it looked like Leia was dead, but because I expected her to somehow be removed from play during the film anyway, since she, Carrie Fisher won't be around for the next episode, it didn't have that same hit. I guess the closest was when Kylo was unable to fire, probably. Um, what about you? Um, what about me? Sorry. I close to any points of being close to yes. tearing up and oh, being yeah, all weepy that. and all, uh, you know, Indiana. First, Jim first time, River. no. For, oh, um, interesting. First time, no. Okay. I, I think because I'm just watching it all play out, you know, I don't have time to get uh, attached as it was. Um, but uh, second time through, there were definitely there were definitely man tears. Um, it was, and a lot of times it's John Williams' fault. You know, he does it to me. Yeah. Uh, with the music, but uh, you know, uh, when R two turns on the the message, the original message uh, from yes. Leia. Yep. You know, um, and because I'm identifying with what the character is feeling. Um, yep living in the moment, you know, um, when Luke or Luke's, uh, manifestation greets Leia in the mm -hmm. base on crate, you know, yeah. it's it, when that music plays and you hear the brother and sister cue come in and, um, so yeah, it's it mostly those moments like that. Um, I'm trying to think. 
So I'll, I'll just I'll have to keep an eye out for those types of those types of emotional effects. I'm hoping to probably go see it again this week sometime. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I think I was kind of like you, like I'm so worried about what's going on the first time. Uh, and now we're getting close to the hour mark, which is about where we were going to cut it. And sure enough, mm-hmm. I'm stuck on a loading screen. Ah, okay. It's not going anywhere for me. And unfortunately, when it does this, there's literally nothing I can do. Um, I have to restart the game in order to play anymore, I think. Um, you might try entering a match okay. and see if it drags me with you. But I'm stuck on, once again, stuck on the freaking black loading screen with the stupid <laughs> little circle peeling away like an onion up in the corner. And we'll continue to be stuck here until I restart the game, unless you wind up being able to drag me back. Well, at first I didn't realize we had played for so long, but yeah, I was like, you're wow. right. We are right about yeah, an hour. So right about an hour. Uh, probably just... a good time for me to uh, get off the stream and tend to some other things. Tend to some, uh, to, to go and do some adulting, eh? Mm-hmm. Do some, some adulting. adulting. All right, so, so yeah, that so that is what we will do here, um, folks. My guess is I will probably do another stream, um, possibly tomorrow. It's really going to depend on when uh, Mark and I are going to get together and record our reactions to the film together and our discussion of it for Star Wars Beyond the Films. We're aiming at doing it sometime tomorrow morning. Uh, before my wife gets back from her trip, just so that we don't have to shuffle around the computer to different rooms or anything. But have no idea. When that's going to be, haven't heard anything from him specifically on that yet. So assuming he and I aren't recording, uh, I may be able to jump on, hopefully. Uh, if not, look for a stream um, sometime, you know, later on in the week. Um, it's a lighter workload now that most of the students are done, and it's just uh, about 28 who are still uh, wrapping things up at this point out of 223, I think it was. Uh, so it should be a smoother week there. Um, I want to thank Jim. Thank you, Jim, for joining me again this was yeah. fun uh, always good to have the conversation felt like that zipped right on by so uh mm-hmm. i'll have to do it again sometime and once again make an hour feel like about 15 minutes which was yep you know <laughs> it's all time dilation in space and and stuff it's physics like leia it's wibbly, pulling wobbly, herself timey, to the there you go yeah exactly all right folks thank you all for watching and uh i'll be back with another stream uh, sometime in the near future thanks everybody